amidst jaw-dropping revelations of good old stealing in Nigeria. There have been calls for sacking of the head of Nigeria's military, but are these calls justified? Also on the breakfast, Nigeria's Independence National Electoral Commission has raised concern over the rising spate of violent clashes among political parties and their supporters. And in of the press, we'll have in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. All these ahead on The Breakfast. And uh, you've got us already. Uh, welcome to the program. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Eboko. It's good to have you join us. Feels like it's a blue mon uh, I was going to say blue Monday, but it's not Monday. Uh, it's already Wednesday. And thanks for joining us. All right. Um, interesting conversations ahead. Um, of course, I can't wait to dive straight into the first one. But uh, our top trending segment is where we usually would uh, look at the stories that are making the rounds um, <laughs> on social space and bringing you um, uh, you know, that kind of information. Uh, what people are talking about the most is what we call a trending story. And um, it has to be something that is really, really recent. And one of the recent ones, the current ones, happen to be, or happens to be um, uh, the head of the Nigerian Sin Diaspora Commission, NIDCOM, uh, uh, journalist and uh, turned politician, uh, Madame Abike Dabiri Erewa, um, of course, following the attack on Nigerian students in Indian universities. Um, so it was a, a long, long, long one uh, statement put out by some of the victims. And um, uh, this, this got a lot of people talking on social media, really. And now, following the attack on students of an Indian, Nigerian students of an Indian university, uh, the lady in question, the chairman of NIDCOM, uh, got involved in a dirty fight with um, uh, an obedient supporter on, on Twitter. This is a supporter of a p b movement, you know, this, uh, um, uh, this particular category of persons know how to drag people on, on social media, um, sparing no efforts in, 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 you know, saying what they think. Um, sometimes they, they regard it as being a bit too extreme. Uh, but on Monday, uh, this is two days ago, uh, there were multiple reports that some Nigerian students at uh, GD Goenka University in Gurgam, India, were attacked. And uh, the... There were some, some sort of uh, statements and tweets shared online uh, to that effect. Uh, very interesting, or very worrying, rather, development. Uh, images also popped up on social media showing some Indian students with weapons chasing their Nigerian counterparts. Uh, now, reacting to that development, Tabike uh, at Dabire Rewa explained that the incident happened on Saturday, October 15, 2022, following a football match between African and Indian students. And uh, this is what she put out in her tweet uh, after uh, someone called Ashok Swain uh, on Twitter shared a tweet saying Nigerian students are being attacked at in a university campus near Delhi. 30,000 Nigerian students come to study in India, India paying money. 50,000 Indians live in Nigeria to make uh, money. Uh, so she now quoted that tweet to say, this happened Saturday as a result of a fracas uh, during a football match between African and Indian students. A Nigerian mission immediately took custody of 86 Nigerian students, invited uh, the representatives of the Indian government, and got their commitment to ensure the safety of uh, the students, um, uh, who then returned back to campus on Sunday. That's what she explained. Uh, she, she, she used the opportunity to call for calm, you know, saying normalcy had re been restored. However, uh, people were not taking that line uh, down. Some of the people on Twitter, um, you know, uh, asked uh, uh, it's very, very, um, very tough questions of, or, or to our Peter Dabriwa. But one of the, um, the student, the, the Twitter users, um, who identifies as a supporter of Peter Obi, the Labour Party presidential candidate, uh, you know, Verbally abused her because describing her as, quote, a Mumu woman, you know, and this is what she says, uh, he or she says, Mumu, quote, uh, uh, she said she should go to Indonesia and see uh, how Nigerians are treated. Mumu, Mumu woman supporting a failed government, she's equally part of the failure. I service, and Mumu is a, a pidgin English term for a word, for a foolish person, you know, so, um, Three hours after I became fired back uh, in the same coin, describing the obedient uh, as uh, this uh, Peter Obi supporter as uh, Ode. Ode is a Yoruba word for a foolish person. Um, and this is what she says. 
uh, my God, <laughs> order. You go to Indonesia, carry drugs, do cultism, and come begging to be rescued from death sentence. Thank God for Andy Ellie in Nigeria, now saving people uh, like you from death row. Um, it's uh, it was a serious back and forth, and uh, you know her comment, you know, to that obedient supporter generated a huge a deluge of re response. Most of which it it was a uh, uh, fiery and salty remarks, you know, insults uh, on the woman's uh, person, character, and her um, her conduct. I'm gonna call it that. Mm. Well, so I, I think that you know Abika's response has made a lot of persons to go back in time, you know, in terms of memory, memory lane to remember, you know, some of the activities that have happened. Uh, some people have remembered the Itunus case in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, am I correct? Cote d'Ivoire that happened, and, and they said, you know, her attitude and her response towards that time is almost the same. People are not really surprised. You have a lot of people responding and asking that, hey, you can't be surprised. The best thing to do is to ensure that you vote out her party. She's been like that. There's a certain, um, you know, tweet uh, that came on, uh, you know, that came out on Twitter that said, uh, how can you be surprised when she was, she retweeted a tweet uh, there's a certain tweet that has been that has resurfaced that talked about her describing the egos. I mean, so someone tweeted and said Nyamari and all of that. She retweeted that tweet. And what is expected of a public official or someone who holds a very um, you know sensitive office as that? I mean, it's okay to say people will get you know under your skin. You understand, but we also cannot take out the other fact. But it should be: should we have a class 101, you know, for all of this to understand the dynamics? Like I mentioned, it has made a lot of people remember the likes of Mobola Johnson, who were government officials, Dora Kunyili, and just some days back, I mentioned Dora Kunyili. Yeah, Mobola G. Johnson. Yeah, Mobola G. Johnson. Okay. I also mentioned, you know, the likes of uh, Dora Kunyili. Uh, this particular action has made a lot of people to remember their likes. And for instance, like I said, we talked about some issue, and then I remembered, you know, Dora Kunyili, who was very, very, you know, interested in, in changing the narrative of the Nigerian people and the Nigerian society, as it were. You know, not to say that the Nigerian society or the Nigerian uh, climate and her people, uh, perfect people, mm -hmm. but to, you know, point to the fact that, hey, Crime and criminality actually happen, but we cannot, you know, go out there and begin to say, hey, my child is wrong, you know, kill the child because it's bad. You know, try to protect the image. And, and she's gotten a lot of knocks for this particular one. Now, one person that has responded as well and asked her to clean this mess up, in her words, uh, uh, I'm paraphrasing at this point because I probably might not, okay, be able, is Obi Ezequisili. Uh, she said, dear Abike, what is this? Kai, this is a mess. Please clean it up quickly, please. And she responded, I'm done on this, but out of respect for you, I will ask, clean what up? It's okay for some untrained, uncloud guy to refer to me as Mumu, and I can't call him or de. I'm not a public official that cows to bullying, please. Uh, this is her response, but people are not really surprised. And the question is, should we do better? Was it okay for her to be referred to as Mumu? It's not really okay, but she needs to understand, you know, the position and office that she occupies, really. It, it's uh, really unfortunate. But that's what we have. We need to move away quickly yes, for the winter yeah, uh, time. But be before we go on, um, uh, I think I'll just say a word or two about this. Uh, um, it, it's it's, it's uh, a bit of a situation where you have a, a public servant who... Um, has had you know some some controversy trailing here, like you mentioned, Mercy. Um, the the Itunu story was heated. I remember a conversation that ensued between Abike Dabri and David Hunde uh, on a radio station I'm familiar with, and um, it wasn't it didn't uh, really show or paint the woman in good light. Uh, what I would say is that she's a human being. Uh, she has feelings, and I do not know anybody who will uh, take being called a Mumu woman. Uh, Mumu person uh, lightly, and I've noticed that in recent times, uh, the public servants, governors, uh, senators, and you know heads of MDAs have decided to do fire for fire on Twitter. You can see uh, Senator Kenan Amani, former governor of Enugu State, how he handles some of these young people, uh, some of them not so young, uh, with the abuse and attack on social media. Uh, he gives it back to them hot hot, and then some of them actually run away. Uh, you have um, the likes of uh, 
Malam Nasir Arufai, governor of Kaduna State, recently, um, you know, took on some supporters of uh, Peter Obi, and he, he quoted some, some of the tweets and called the man a clown, you know, um, and some said, ah, you are a governor, now you shouldn't be saying this. And he said, well, nobody has a monopoly of violence. However, uh, I think it's important for uh, Madame Abike Dabri Rivera Erewa to, to realize that sometimes it's not worth it. You know, um, you know, it's not worth it. Even if, I mean, I'm not talking now about whether she's done her job well or not, but how you respond to the bullying online, because it's downright bullying, you know, it's, um, it's cyber bullying, really. It's mm -hmm. calling people names. Um, you know, they, they, some of the supporters of these parties, political parties, and not just Labour Party, uh, feel that they can hound, um, you know, people into, into hating some candidates or supporting some candidates or into, yeah, into taking a decision that will favor their candidate. <coughs> so the final thing we can say on this is that um, uh, the public officials need to also control themselves and realize that it's not worth it. If you see some of the people who, um, who, who react or who, who talk or who tweet about these things, you'll be disappointed that you actually took your time to dignify them with uh, the response. We have to move on to our next yeah, uh, top definitely. segment. Definitely, Be because you know, the issue yeah, of bullying we, we have to move on to is not one. limited you yeah. know, uh, to politicians and those who are supporting different political parties. But quick one, uh, running through this particular one, is that the governor, Erufai, they seem to have an early throwback just before Thursday. I'm not sure that event happened on a Thursday. And so he, 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 he was uh, in a situation where he had to recount or uh, talk about his experience when he was detained during a 20, 20, uh, 2013 Anambra governorship elections. And that was way back, really. So he shared his experience. Governor of Kaduna State, like I mentioned, Nasir Erufai. He said that he was arrested and his movement restricted on the day of election. Uh, that's the Anambra State election, 2013. Uh, he shared his experience. And that happened, you know, some days back. Uh, during an interactive session with the Arawa Joint Committee. Uh, he said, I recall experiencing when I was an official of the All Progressive Congress, I wanted to go in to have breakfast and I was blocked by the SSS officials holding AK-47, threatening me that I have directives from Abuja to, or they have directives from Abuja to restrict me to my room. And I said, on what basis? And they said, that's their directive. Well, let me tell you, Nigeria is a democratic country. I have freedom to move and intend to move. I intend to go anywhere, and I w you won't stop me. The very idea of restricting movement on election day is unlawful. I also, uh, we've seen reports from, uh, you know, uh, he's currently the Labour uh, uh, presidential candidate uh, for the elections 2023, talking about Peter Abe. He said that, hey, you need to focus on the issues and stop with all of these lies and propaganda and blackmailing and what have you. And that's the issue. Kofi? Yes, yes, indeed. I mean, I've seen the, the stories now for, for a couple of days. Um, but what caught my attention was um, the back and forth between Erufai and supporters of Labour Party presidential candidate. You know, this uh, Erufai's um, walk down the memory lane or history uh, lane is because of the... Um, the the appearance and the uh, campaigns by Peter Obi, the, the Labour Party presidential candidate, whom we've talked about this second time, means he's quite popular, um, to Kaduna State. Of course, the Arewa um, uh, Forum has been inviting or has invited the top presidential candidates to come make presentations at the Arewa House at the Amadu, Amadu Bello University in Kaduna State. And um, Obi was one of them. So, I mean, of course, uh, Erufai was there. Um, when the APC presidential candidate, Bola Matinobo, made his own submission at uh, that event. You know, they hosted them separately. Atiku has been there as well. And uh, he, he had to say, see, this happened and uh, you were part of those who incarcerated me. Um, so if I, if I do the same thing to you, don't complain. But um, some people think this is all in the bid to score political points. Um, it's... Uh, campaign season and some people think this is a, a part of the gamesmanship you know of the political campaign period where the politicians would look, use every opportunity um, you know to paint the opponents black um, to cast doubts over the question the character of the opponents and then um, it's it's normal but the thing is is it true that it'll be um, really order know. his incarcerated detention for 40 hours in his hotel room or it will be supported the fact is that Aerofy was actually kept in that hotel room for the period of time he said he was kept. That is a fact. Now, but what the jury is out on is if Obi 
ordered it? Or did he just, was he just a victim of circumstance, being the governor of Anambra State at the time? Um, so someone said, you know, put out on Twitter a tweet saying, uh, quote, Aerofy, this is a Twitter user, user Tootsie22, saying Aerofy is a compulsive liar. This is a video of him saying that he was arrested by the SSS based on an order from Abuja, yet he lied uh, in Arewa House that will be arrested him in Anambra State. This is why his hands can't reach his feet to tie his shoelaces. Um, 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 in other words, saying that um, uh, maybe he's a short man, you know, because he's called short and over. But, but, but Aerofy didn't allow that good. It's just a, you know, just a random Twitter user. He had to quote uh, the tweet and respond to it saying, says, yes, but your little god, you know, in small g, uh, Peter B later revealed on national TV, and he put, he said, we have the video clip that he got the unlawful detention uh, effected and said I had no right to be in Anambra state uh, since it was not Katsira state. Uh, the cl he, these are his words. The clown didn't even know that I am from Kaduna state. So he, what Erufai now went on to say is that, yes, I admitted on national TV that it was based on an order from above in Abuja. But what you don't know and what I should tell you is that there is um, a clip of Obi, Obi actually said that he effected that uh, a detention order. Hmm. So he's part of it. And no, um, so, so about, uh, people, um, people, yes, just finally, Mercy, people um, sharing evidence for and against, you know, uh, Obi denying it on a television program, uh, they share clips of that, some saying that, uh, you know, Aerofy was only being salty because of Obi's, the support that he received yeah, in, but, in Kaduna State. But um, one of some supporters of Aerofy have gone back to, 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 to uh, you know, share screenshots of um, uh, headlines. For instance, there's one here uh, from the leadership in Abuja, 16th November 2013, uh, with the headline, Anambra Guba Governor Obi Backs. There's one here of um, uh, a, a headline from the leadership newspaper, which says Anambra Guba uh, Governor Obi Backs Police Restriction of Aerofy. You know, so I, I think uh, this is part of the gamesmanship, uh, like I said. Oh, well. Uh, I think that you, you have raised uh, some interesting questions, and some of the question you raise is whether or not, you know, that's the situation, that's the case. Uh, we have to move on, really, because if you say, I ordered, who controls the DSS? Who does the DSS answers to? Who does, you know, the military officer answers to? These are, you know, some of the questions that you have raised that would, you know, further and require more engagement. But we do not have time. Uh, we probably need to move to the other one. Well, very quickly, um, I mean, the Lagos State uh, Governor and uh, the River State Government, Governor Abid, having a sort of a, a, no love, a, a, a romantic relationship, if you want to call it that. Uh, yes, on week a, um, which has received our Governor Sound of Lagos at least two times, uh, at his sprawling mansion uh, in Port Harcourt's River State. And um, uh, it was now the turn of uh, uh, Samuel Lu to host uh, yes, a week of River State. And indeed, River Wiki came to Lagos, and um, he's a PDP governor, and this is campaign period. And the PDP has a, has a, a, a candidate in, in Lagos State. But he was at that event, uh, a women's event right here in Lagos State. And he made some very important uh, and uh, some would say controversial statements. He said that Sonlu had done well as governor of uh, Lagos State. And he declared his uh, support for Sonlu's uh, uh, re-election bid. He said, you know, if you're a PDP governor and you're not doing well, I will not visit you. Uh, but even if you're not a PDP governor, if you're doing well, I'll visit you. I only identify with people who are doing well because I, as a governor, Governor Wiki, I also am doing well. But, but another thing that uh, generated some reaction, Messi, happens with a donation of 300 million naira um, by the River State Governor. Uh, this was an event which held at a hotel in Lagos, not far from where we are, organized by the Committee of Wives of Lagos State Officials, Kaul, Kaul So. I think I can call, that that, call it that. So um, he said all the nice things about someone who said he's doing well, but very importantly, he also donated 300 million naira to the association. And River people have been reacting to this. I must tell you that, you know, they have been reacting to this. They will definitely yeah. re react to this. And uh, you also have the People's Democratic Party, Lagos State chapter, condemning the, uh, the fact that, uh, like you say, it's a romance, the romance or the relationship between uh, the governor of River State and uh, that of Lagos State. Uh, it's very condemnable.
and they have really frowned at it. Uh, you know, looking at some of the statements that's been put out, no matter what's going on in the party, whether or not are you should be removed or not removed, uh, it's not enough for you yeah. to you know act in I this think, way. I think what they said was it will make uh, someone look jobless in Lagos State. You know, so so so, so he, he he made a lot of statements. Mm. A statement as I mean, nobody can. Uh, he doesn't think that any party can actually win. But how would you describe the action of the River State Governor? Uh, that can categorically, I mean, there's no, uh, you know, there's no sugar coating in this particular one. It's really an anti-party uh, anti kind of politics that's being played out openly. And why would, you know, the River State governor engage in such a practice? It's, it's an open, you know, expression. You are of the PDP, you are of a governor, a caliber of that. Uh, once upon a time, you contested at the, uh, you know, uh, at, the, at the internal level to become a flag bearer, uh, presidential flag bearer, and that didn't happen. It's, it's, there's a lot that's expected of Wike, and he's not lived up to that expectation. And that categorically can be said as an anti-party kind of activity. But what happens? Some people think that this is actually a deliberate effort by Wiki himself so that the party would take an action and so he can just move away. Let's not forget. Uh, there were that's, anticipation. That's, 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 there were that's, anticipation. That's very interesting. Yes, you know, there were anticipation that he should have left. I mean, if you look at it, the things are not working for him, and nobody seemed to be listening. And the best thing that every, or you know, the greatest move that any politician would take would be, hey, I would decamp, leave the party. But what's, what has Wiki done? Wiki has not left the party. Wiki is still in the party. Then why are you acting contrary, you know, to the principles and the general practice that's expected? Are you expected well, that well, well, is he expecting that he should be expelled? Not, can he not grace an occasion by his no, 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 that's not necessarily an occasion being graced. It is a statement that was released by the chief, uh, you know, press secretary of Songwulu, and that's why it's generating a lot of this action. Let, let's let's quickly just watch roll the tape and then we'll come back. Even if he belongs to my party, I won't come. So, for me. If you're in my party and you're not doing well, you won't see me. If you're not in my party and you're, and you're doing well, you will see me. And that is what I stand for. And I will not regret to say that I'm in support of you. He said his administration has continued to emulate legal state by ensuring that women are... All right, Messi, qu quite interesting. Uh, I I'll just uh, take a few minutes, uh, or a, a few seconds, sorry, uh, to read some of the comments of Rivers because um, it seems they're not happy. Just some, one comment. Some are not happy uh, about uh, the development. Um, some says that, some someone said, you know, in, this, in, this, in reaction to this comment, the governor says, if you're not doing well, I won't visit you. He says, I don't believe my governor, yes, will make on this one. He went to Abia State and currently maintains a healthy romance, or romance, rather, uh, with Governor Ekpazu. Now, is Governor Ekpazu doing well? It's a question someone asks, which made me laugh a lot. Someone says he's doing the payback time, he's working for Tinubu. You know, so these are the issues. Um, some feel he's working for the APC presidential candidate. But the final one that I think uh, is also important. Someone said that uh, pensioners slash death benefits of next of kings in River State are crying every day at the state secretariat, myself included. Nothing is happening. Now, so, so uh, come next week with a here. Yet 300 million naira gone just like that. The reversible don't spare any effort in bearing their minds. We have to go. Uh, we really have to go. I mean, if we won't talk about that, we probably might not just leave here today. A lot of people also think that uh, there's need for those who are experiencing, uh, whose house have been submerged and properties in the flood, and they need all of this money. We're talking absolutely, about absolutely. all of that. But That's we need to take important. a breakdown. Mm. When we return, it'll be time for us to go through the pages. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.